the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom into the Ponce Inlet. It's Ponce de Leon, uh, the Florida version. And we're gonna come into this area that looks really nice and hang out for today, tomorrow and the rest of today. Probably get some good eats, see what it's all about, this little cute town. And that's what ICW cruising is all about, just finding little adorable towns and getting to know the people and getting to know the food. I went by your house, what a big mistake this museum with the lighthouse and everything but of course we can't go in because of all the pets but we can look at the lighthouse which is the tallest lighthouse in all of Florida that our bilge pump ran and then ran and then ran again and it kept running like a lot it's apparently I don't know what this sticker is but this thing it jammed our check valve open and that trickle is the sound of our boat sinking because I dropped the check valve into the sump <laughs> ah yes the sound of water flowing steadily into our boat this is just an image of your squirrel boxers. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Maddie had the great idea, since the boat is sinking all this time, put some tape on it. So we did. It slowed the leak a lot while I looked for this little check valve that fell into the bilge. But let's observe how quickly this thing is sinking us without this tape on here. There's also a coin from Bermuda helping to seal the leak. Because that's a thing you have in a boat that sails around a lot. <laughs> yep. Just, you know, pouring water in. It's fine. This oh is my fine. Gosh. So the whole issue is the through hole's below the water line. It's a bad idea. I think next time we haul out, which is gonna be pretty soon, we're gonna change that. So we got the stuff out of the check valve. Now we put this in. It should stop sinking. <laughs> 
reattach all this stuff. And don't fall out again. <laughs> ah, there you go. Man, I am glad I put automatic bilge pumps in this boat because otherwise it'd be bad. <laughs> Yeah, so at first I thought our packing gland was really loose and leaking, but it was leaking, so it was a combination. It was everything going bad all at once. <laughs> Yay. So I tightened our packing gland, and then the leak kept going. And then I just looked in here, and while I was trying to see where our leak was, it just filled up the bilge in a matter of minutes. And then the pump ran. I'm like, that's not good. So when I lifted the pump up, the pump was just trickling water out. I'm like, all right, it's check valves bad. A uh, little piece of trash almost sank our boat. What uh, was in the check, the check valve? A sticker. Like, from what? I don't know. That, that's the thing. It's some like, it looks like a computery sticker. It's like gold and shimmery. So it's something that we sucked in from outside? Well, it's something that we brought into the boat. Oh. Fell into the bilge. Got sucked up. And then tried to sink us. Got it. Yeah. Fun, fun. If it was a bird seed, that'd be hilarious. But this is like a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> a gold sticker. Like, normally those are Maybe for good Maybe it was jobs. like on a fruit. Ah, it's like really stiff. Ah, yes. The leak has stopped. Yay. Good. Success. I just got to get this tightened in here. We are no longer sinking. <laughs> Goodbye, water, and stay out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this little sticker. No idea what this is from. Almost sank our boat. Tiny little thing. All right, so the current's flowing pretty strong. And we're going to get the anchor up, get moving. So we're going to be leaving Ponce, and we're going to be heading towards Seabreeze to anchor in this place by the Twin Bridges, because that's a name that they gave a place that has two bridges that are next to each other. But in between those bridges is a park so we can get the shore, we can walk the dog, and most importantly go get some food because we're out of that. The goal is to get 9 miles north, or 9.8, so 10 miles north. So with this current, it should give us about a 2 knot push, which means if we go 4 knots, now all of a sudden we're going 6 knots. So the whole point that we need to do is get up this river until we get past the point where the tide exists, because eventually the tide flattens out. Like where we are now, it's a 3 to 4 foot tide, where we're going, it's a 0.8 foot tide, so not much. So if we can get up there before the tide changes and starts sucking us back out to sea, then we make it there really fast, anchor, and then just enjoy life. A really nice thing, we're motoring at 62 amps right now, which is uh, 3.2 kilowatts for anyone who cares about that. Now the awesome part, we're, the motor's consuming 62 amps, but we're actually only consuming 50 amps because early, it's only 9.30, the sun is already putting in 10 amps into the system with the solar panels. So that's just free money right there. A lot of people have been asking us why we're doing the ICW all the way up to Maryland from Florida. And we have a few reasons. The first is that we have a dog now on board and we want to be able to give him three walks a day. We think that's really important. The other is that the ICW is actually kind of a treasure. It is beautiful and there are some really exciting moments that I just can't wait to see particularly in Georgia and North Carolina but as we come up here in northern Florida there's some really cool stops as well St. Augustine is going to be exciting it's a historic little town uh, with ah. some beautiful sights and it's just a really neat way to explore the east coast of the U.S. When we came down this way we actually went outside for most of it because we are an ocean going vessel we are a sailboat first and foremost but it's just a really cool new and different experience for us to do this ICW as well as being a test to our electric motor and our new lithium batteries which are working out really really well. Okay so I saw a minute earth years ago where they were talking about how bodies of water like oceans and seas and stuff like that and rivers and oceans all that when they come into contact that there isn't a strong demarcation between them and that is very false because there very much is. Differences in temperature and salinity will keep the water separated. I mean, when you go scuba diving, you will come across what they call thermoclines, and it's 
two different bodies of water. They're different temperatures, they don't mix. So when we're coming in here, we have the brackish water of this river and then the incoming salt water from the tide. And where they met, it was a line that you could like plainly see. And when we hit it, it felt like hitting a wall. Like the boat just like punched into this thing and it did not like it. That's just, it's so mind boggling. Like water is water. You think if you put something in, it's gonna spread everywhere, but it, it doesn't. It really like is a thing unto itself. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I got nothing to worry about when you're by my side. I looked out and I saw yeah. the rain. These guys are all in the channel. I to go away. Their argument was that we had to leave the channel and go around them because we weren't under sail. They didn't have to budge. No concept of drafts or water depths or anything because I, that their world, their boats draw like a couple inches, and when the motor's down, it draws like a foot. Yeah, I just don't look. It's terrifying. I just I look at the number. I see that it'll fit, and I just don't look up. From the wound for at least a year. Every time. I couldn't clean myself up. I reached out for the bottom run. You hoisted me. once again this is kind of like a daily routine now we just anchor in the afternoon pick up anchor in the morning go for about 10 15 miles anchor down and then repeat So this is going to be one of those moments where lithium batteries really shine because today we have 15 to 18 knots of wind right on the nose. So there's no sailing because it's a narrow channel, there's nowhere to short tack or anything. So you're just motoring straight into this and it's pushing you back. And we left the anchorage with only 60% charge and that's fine because with lithium like it gives you full power until the very end and the very end is a very long ways away. So we're gonna be doing 10 miles up into this to just carry on our way. Now, if we had a diesel, yeah, people wouldn't even think twice about this. They just motor and not realize they burned a little extra fuel. But when you're electric, you're a little more uh, aware of things that are going against you and you try and get everything as favorable as you can. But lithium gives you a little bit of a break there and lets you just, you know, go anyway. It's a tired sort of day. Ah. One thing that actually makes this a little, like very different from an ocean crossing <gasps> is that one of us has to constantly be steering and looking forward. Whereas in the ocean, you're not gonna hit anything. <laughs> so you do have to be aware of ships and stuff, but we can't exactly set our monitor wind vane in the, uh, in the ICW. 
So we're not relying on wind at all, which is such a change from what we're used to. So it can just be kind of grueling to have somebody always having to be at the helm, but there you have it. The other thing is you can just stop any time, <laughs> whereas you cannot do that in the ocean. There are definitely pros and cons. Which do you like best? That's tough. Since we have all the pets with us, I prefer this over the ocean. And since we can just kind of uh, stop anywhere and go into town and see people and meet people, like this is a lot better. But as far as like destinations, I found it to be much more exciting to be in the ocean and to be going to all sorts of unique and cool countries and places. I definitely prefer that, but uh, there, there are elements of this. Right now I'm in the mindset of the ICW and I wouldn't want to be out there right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I really prefer the ocean. Like, it's nice in here that chop is like four inches, so that's it. All the hatches are open. We don't worry about a single rogue wave or any of that stuff because it's calm in here. But I do miss the just setting the sails for like the next week and not worrying about hitting land or anything like just being out in the middle of the blue ocean and just looking out and as far as you can see is just nothingness. I love that. We're here, I mean, you're like surrounded by land and we're in this pretty wide river with a super narrow channel. Completely different world. So out in the ocean, you have commercial ships that like they know what they're doing and then other sailors. And if a sailor is out in the ocean, they either know what they're doing or they're dead. So you don't really meet people who don't have a clue how boats work. But here it's like, you can put your boat in the water, motor around and then pull back out and they don't have to really know what they're doing. And then you run into problems. I think something that allows me to be much happier right now is the fact that I don't get seasick. I have not been seasick in months. And that is a nice, nice feeling. <laughs> the waterway got really narrow uh, up here where we are now, and we had to anchor. We got to our anchorage, but since it's so narrow, we need to make sure the boat stays out of the channel. We're long, we're 45 feet. So in order to not swing into the channel, we need to put out a stern hook. So we're getting out our stern hook road now, which we keep in our aft lazarette. All right, so now we're gonna get the anchor hooked up on this. We're gonna use a fortress anchor because we're in mud and fortress are great for mud. ground very aground and today's little fiasco adventure was made possible thanks to the most valuable tool on this boat sailing with George is the charter company that's giving a boat to us for a week in Greece thanks for watching this episode of sailing wisdom don't forget to like the video share it with your friends and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next rigging doctor episode and if you're interested in even more Ringing Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.